Hola, soy Eduardo y bienvenidos a My Zen Journey. Hoy les traigo un programa muy interesante porque es una entrevista con Stephanie Bocuse, que es una perfumista increíble y que tiene unos proyectos no solamente eh, en el tema de crear composiciones, sino también un proyecto que no les quiero adelantar mucho, pero bueno, a mí me, me dejó con la boca abierta ahorita que estuvimos en Milán. Y les quiero compartir esta entrevista. Eh, obviamente es una entrevista que hicimos en inglés. Afortunadamente tuve ya la oportunidad de hacer todo el tema de la subtitulación. Entonces espero que les guste. En esta entrevista, la primer mitad de, de, de la sesión, vamos a platicar sobre el más reciente lanzamiento de la casa portuguesa Comporta, que se llama Will, y es una composición justamente de Stephanie Bocuse, junto con Bertrand Duchafour, y está increíble el perfume, sobre todo porque la idea que tenía Pedro, que es el director eh, comercial y dueño de la marca, era pues un poquito generar un perfume completamente disruptivo, en fin, ya dejaremos que Stephanie nos platique sobre eso, y la segunda mitad de la entrevista estaremos platicando sobre este proyecto, que de verdad está increíble, y que lo más probable es que lo tengamos en noviembre, en la segunda edición de Mexent. Entonces, pues señores, espero que les guste esta entrevista, tanto como a mí fue hacerla, y bueno, nos vemos después. Señores, ¿cómo están? Pues les traemos ahorita una exclusiva, porque vamos a estar... Eh, platicando con Stephanie Bukush, que es eh, una perfumista y hace muchos proyectos también eh, con respecto al tema olfativo y obviamente quisimos tener la oportunidad de poder platicar, nos venimos ahorita a una salita porque allá afuera está hecho un relajo, entonces pues bueno, vamos a cambiar a inglés, eh, espero que no los perdamos, <risa> entonces Stephanie, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much for, for this time. Thank you for uh, your time and this interview. No, 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 it, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And uh, we had the chance to meet each other uh, yesterday, at the, yesterday or the day before, at the launch of the new perfume from Comporta, sí. which is called Will. Will. And uh, for all of you, th there's the new release of Comporta, which is a Portuguese perfume house. And Stephanie is uh, part of the of the team that create that perfume. So, why don't you tell us a bit of um, the inspiration behind the perfume yeah. or the story? You know, because I think it's very you know, I don't know how it changes from the original you know uh, how can I say concept or yes. brief, and then how it ends up to be? <laughs> It's a good question. It was indeed one of the very unique brief. Okay. Uh, because uh, Pedro, um, so the founder of uh, Comporta Perfumes, wanted really, as he said, like a, a new aesthetical fact in perfumery. Wow. So that was a lot of pressure, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which are not the best conditions to create, but still can also boost the creativity. Okay. And he really wanted something that we wouldn't talk about too much about ingredients and that we wouldn't it wouldn't even be easy to classify he wanted like a new maelstrom in perfumery you know? wow. so um, a new way to treat maybe ingredients or something that gave a sensation of something new and extremely modern like the perfume of the future okay so that was the idea with a total freedom uh, regarding the olfactory direction to take that's great yeah okay so we began with a few ideas of new perfumes for Yeah, for three or four different ideas, and we focused quite quickly on one of them together with Bertrand because uh, it's it's funny, it's like a coincidence, but I think there's no coincidence. Um, there's a notion that Pedro introduced to us since the beginning was the notion of verticality. Okay. Uh, just like the image of the summit of a diamond, you know, sharp, sharp summit. So we kept this in mind and wanted something extremely fusing, sharp, and, and so it's extremely strong and fresh at the same time, but very, very impacting since the beginning of the, okay. of the fragrance. Um, and it's, fun, it's funny because we one code name of the first draft ideas we had was <laughs> vertical, actually. Okay, vertical. So yeah. it was, and it was also our favorite. So yeah, it's, it, it remained the code name until the end. Okay. And we worked something, you know, there are so many perfumes today on the market. We're not going to pretend having used a, unique ingredients never used in perfumes or whatever it's not the case it's more a play on we totally broke the proportions actually of, okay. the, of the ingredients as we used to normally use them, use them. Normally. okay yeah. oh my god so it's it's not really thought as a pyramidal perfume like classical top uh, heart and base 
even the woody or modern ambery effects in the bass are here to to At the beginning. To, yeah to be, to be con contribute to this verticality and be p perceivable since the beginning wow. yeah so in the end it's um, a very nice blend of uh, a huge proportion of natural ingredients because okay. we played this verticality with a lot of natural ingredients on top. Uh, so with like very they cold spices, piney, a little bit citrusy, but and different things really to make it really sharp, sharp. from the beginning. Okay. Very sparkling, so very strong and impacting too, which is quite good for the market now. Of course. <laughs> and then uh, we do have a very interesting evolution. Top notes are also some of them very volatile, so it really reveals something quite different. It evolves a lot, which I like in their creation. Okay. And and extremely yeah strong and long lasting also because uh, it's a play really between naturals and very modern molecules. It's really both. Okay. Which is the signature to me of great perfumes in, in history also. Yeah. Uh, to the magic of the combination of the two. Wow. It sounds it sounds amazing now. I hear you say something like cold spices. What what would you say are the cold spices, for example? The cold what we call cold cold spices yeah. are the most sparkling one. Though. Okay. So in, in terms of chemistry, they are composed of, of very volatile molecules. Okay. And th th there would be cardamom and pepper, ginger, uh, okay. th these kind of sparkling pe like pink pepper also of course. Wow. The the very sparkling ones. On the contrary, when you talk about like cinnamon or cloves, yeah, you have a kind of warmth, warm. and okay. yeah, and it's more. They are more like hard base fa facets, whereas the other one are really top notes. Okay, now now I understand. And you know something? I love pink pepper because in Mexico, especially Mexico City, we have them almost in all the streets. You have the the, the trees oh, yeah? of the pink pepper oh, yeah. called pirul. And every time, you know, when they bloom, you can go there, you, you, you take them. And it's very interesting because people are used to the, 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 the pink pepper that you have on your table, which is dry maybe years now. So it's spicy, but it loses all of the, heat, all of the piney yes, part. Yeah, and yeah. when you take it raw, even it, it's sticky. And if you eat it, it's like piney, more, mostly yeah, it's piney. Yeah, like an explosion of yeah. sparkling freshness. So now yes. that you say, I love that. <laughs> uh, so the idea was vertical. Tell me something. How do they change that to wheel? So wheel, I mean, for what you say, maybe it's not a proper name, but it's wheel, like uh, uh, how you say it in Espanol? Um, voluntad? Sí, like, como voluntad. Uh, sí, it's this, so first, it's not our choice as consumers. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's always the, it's always the... Pedro choice. <laughs> so it's always a choice from the brand, the name. I know that it has been a long thought uh, for the team. Okay. Because uh, they looked for names also maybe linked to this uh, uh, verticality or to the, the world of jewelry with diamonds, you know, and and uh, like vertice, you have yep. this word, you know, yep. and uh, which was maybe which was a nice example of name, but maybe less easy in terms of international also. Okay. Uh, and actually, we were surprised. I was surprised when I when when Pedro told me Will. I was like, okay, you know, so it, that's a different idea. <laughs> yeah, completely. But it's it's really I it, it was really meaningful because it's also compared to the brief. I mean, it's his will for the future. It's your will. It's a word full of. Uh, of hope turned to towards you know the future. Yeah. It's I think it's a very good name actually for uh, a perfume. It, it's amazing. It's yeah. even surprising <laughs> it was free. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, it, yeah, it's and a, I think it's a very brilliant name. I smelled it and I think I think well you know but I, I think it, it's going to be a success. You know it's uh, it's <laughs> easy so. but it's uh, you know like you said. Uh, very, very, very in your face, like uh, very sharp. Yes, That's the word yes. that I'm looking for. <laughs> well, thank you for that because um, you couldn't explain it better. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Now I'm waiting for your feedbacks and oh, your customer's uh, uh, feedback. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, That's the real test. That's the real That's going to be now. the real How test. How is it going to be welcome? So I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be able to bring um, uh, a bottle to, to Mexico. And each week we do this kind of uh, sessions or mm -hmm. katas. So it's very interesting because you can see the reaction of the people. 
So, well, the end customer, if you want to call it like that. There are some that are more experienced, there are some that are new, and you, you have some very amazing surprises. Sometimes you think, well, they are new, they're going to like the easy part of perfumery, and they pick, for example, something from Sarah Baker and Miguel Matos, and it's mm. like, you like that? <laughs> Whoa, really? And uh, so, yeah, it's very funny. We will see how it goes. But um, another, uh, I, wa I wanted to ask you for another part of, the, of what you do. Um, I understand you're a curator in yes. Osmotech. Yes. I don't know if you can uh, explain us what is Osmotech? Osmotech is the unique worldwide conservatory of uh, original versions of perfumes still on the market or disappeared. So it's first important to know it's, it's an association. It is non-lucrative. Okay? Yep. Um, and the role of Osmotech is first the preservation, the preservation of this immense collection of perfumes. It has been created 30 years ago by wow. a brilliant perfumer called Jean Kerleau, okay. uh, who, who is a former perfumer from Jean Patou, uh, among uh, other experiences. <laughs> and, um, and he thought that it's just not possible not to have a place in the world to, have, to keep a memory of these amazing perfumes year after year uh, that are constantly discontinued, but also the masterpieces that have founded the base of our arts, yeah. uh, and particularly the ones, that, what we call at the beginning of modern perfumery, which would be early yeah, from the beginning uh, 20th century, with the use of these new molecules combined to the naturals that really created a new era in perfumery. Okay. So, <laughs> we, the cave, uh, our, we, we, we talk about the perfume cave, even though it's not the cave downstairs, <laughs> but it's like a big room where we keep, uh, we have uh, a series of, um, of wine fridges, actually, because it's the same conditions that, that are needed, you know. Okay. Um, every perfume is kept in a brown glass bottle, so it's uh, preserved from light. Uh, but of course, it's a living collection because it remains perfume. It remains perfume. So yeah. um, we have today five five thousand perfumes in the cave. Oh my god! Among which almost nine hundred have totally disappeared. So it's a place where so you are absolutely guaranteed to smell the unique original versions of the perfumes. At, perfume, sorry, as they have been created at the, at the time. That's amazing. So that's an opportunity to smell, for example original like the 1921 version of Chanel number no. five or uh, the, the original wow. version also of the, the amazing creations from Jacques Guerlain from the beginning of the 20th century but also so to have this the, the brands keep their formula secret of course so okay. they play the game and we have uh, someone in these companies who compound the perfumes as they have been created at the time because they even if they couldn't be sold like this today because of course of the changes due to regulations, regulations. yeah um, and uh, another important part is to be able to make to bring bring to life again perfumes like the genius creations of François Coty, for example, from the first years of the 20th century. Yeah. <laughs> and this perfumer was a real genius. I mean, he created all the olfactory families and, and of course, until we are still working today. Yeah. The sheep, the embers, the, the, the first amazing realistic rose single floral perfume using new molecules also that wow. has just been discovered, etc. So L'Ambrantique, Chypre, Rose Jacques Minot because uh, the inheritance from the family, for example, Coty family, trusted the Osmotech with the original formulas from François wow. Coty. So it's a very precious and long work also because it needs also to be able to use some ingredients that we don't use anymore. So this is also something difficult, but until now we still succeed to do it and That's to source amazing. real musk, real ambergris, but even just qualities, you know, like bergamot, for example, today is treated to take away some molecules that are photosensitive, you know, okay. sensitive to light. And uh, but at the time, they used to use perfectly regular, full, you As know, it is. bergamot. <laughs> so, yeah, so we need also to, you know, have partners to also supply us with supply us with these qualities of ingredients, like oak moss, for example, wow. the real oak moss, you know, not treated anyhow. So yeah, it's it's a big part. So preservation is the first role, and it's really the most important to keep in mind. 
the memory of these perfumes that are regularly recompounded, of course, because yes. they get old, even if we keep them away from light, heat, and oxygen. Then the second most important role also, also is transmission, because we don't do all this for the for these perfumes to, to just you know, Be sleep in the, yeah. in the cave. <laughs> so we lead a certain number of com conferences uh, for all type of publics, professionals and individuals, and for brands and for groups, uh, training sessions, different, uh, different uh, themes on the history of perfume since antiquity, or specific themes, of course. Wow. And uh, we also have a scientific uh, research committee now, which is quite recent. So I mean, very it, important place. It, it sounds side. amazing. It's I, a beautiful it's, place to know. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, I don't know. It's, it's important. Me as exists. a perfume lover, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's uh, wow. You know, it's like that it exists. Yeah. It would be. And, and one question, for example, um, I, I understand that they are located in Versailles. In Versailles, they are hosted in in the Izipka School. They don't belong to Izipka. Okay. As Osmotic is totally independent. Independent. And as a uh, as a public normal person, can you visit, or you have to be on the industry? No, absolutely not. You can absolutely visit. You just drop an email and organize just a, a, a meeting time because, of course, we are busy, very busy too, and the team is small. But it's totally open to public, of course. We need to go to France. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me something. For example, if if you want to go, I mean, you cannot smell five thousand perfumes uh, can you can you be more than an hour can you be several days there can for example if I want to write a book or something mm. do you have like access let's say like a like a library something like that so you'll never have access like freely to the whole cave and no. smell whatever you want it's a very special procedure when I tell you for example that we keep the perfumes away from oxygen it means that for example each time we open a bottle before we close it, we, we put some argon gas in okay. it, right? so it's a heavy gas, you know, to, prov to prevent oxidation. oxidation so yeah. everything is very strict, but we do organize a lot of even private sessions, okay. and we do we really res respond to bespoke demands actually from wow. a special program with a series of of uh, you know of, of learning sessions okay. of, and with a specific demand on on a list of perfumes you want to include in there, it will be done. <laughs> and one question, how are, how are you founded, uh, funded? Uh, it's like public with a, the, with a ticket of going there or do you have like private funding? How do you operate? No, no, it's, a, it's, um, it's uh, thanks to the contribution of different companies in the industry who support okay. Osmotech. Okay. It's a donation uh, Amazing. system and, uh, and also like the, I don't know how you say this in English, like Chambre de Commerce. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, like the the, tra the, the tr uh, trade chamber of Versailles, you know. So okay. There are some institutions also that contribute. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, system. because I imagine it's it, it's it, it's not ex uh, cheap doing no, that. No, it's project. not cheap doing this. So <laughs> yeah. we perfumers are um, are uh, um, volunteers. Yeah. Only volunteers, but Osmotic does need also to hire a small permanent team that of is course. hired there and of course yes the materials, all these, the and, materials and all these conferences the organization to rent the rent the places to do the conferences wow. and it's a so yes we need funds this is this is i think it's amazing uh, i here on exams i had the chance to visit the booth yes and they had you know, I don't know, maybe like 100 perfumes there, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, we tried and to do a selection, it was so hard to choose, you know, among the 5,000, like, okay, we need to have only like 100 with us. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it would be, hopefully one day you could come, for example, to Mexico, we are doing some expos there, and something like what you did here, you know, it's going outside and, and, and let the public know what it is, because I think as a perfume lover, this is a this is the project you should support you know it's a, it's the way in which eventually people can you know remember yeah. perfumes so and uh, understand also even the perfumery today i mean the, to understand the history of perfumes and their evolution the emancipation of the masculine fragrances and everything is absolutely passionate. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> well, uh, Stephanie, thank you. Thank you very My much pleasure. for your time. I'm so I, much looking forward to visiting you now in Mexico City. Yeah, it's it it would be amazing. And and I, 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 really, I really can tell you that a lot of people, after seeing this interview, they will be eager to try. You know, Not many will be able to go to Versailles, but uh, eventually, if you can, can be there to visit and showcase that, 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 that project, I think it will have a uh, very 
a lot of attendees. <laughs> I really <laughs> hope so. So, so pronto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for your time and um, see you guys later. Bye.